All right. Well, welcome everybody to our Atlas Deployathon, uh, where we're going to talk about bringing your own front end framework to the Atlas platform. Um, and we kind of wanted to have this session uh, because there's like, I don't know, I saw a couple of mentions of our platform out in the wild and people seem to think that because we were investing so heavily in building the Faust JS framework, uh, that that was actually a requirement to use headless WordPress on the Atlas platform. And so we're kind of here to dispel that myth, um, to show you how you can get started with a bunch of these frameworks um, and manage that complexity, right? Because like, as when I was going through and just sort of taking a lay of the land, you know, not all of the node now with deployment targets like the edge, like Cloudflare, you know, things like that, we're, we're seeing a lot more complex framework deployments happen. And so we figured we would just run through a bunch and as many as we can get through in an hour uh, so that you all could, you know, see for yourselves some of the features of the platform, definitely see in real life that it does not require Faust in any way. Um, so with that, I'll sort of set, set the stage and, you know, like, I, I know most of you are probably interested in headless WordPress, um, but I always like to start with these two slides just to sort of remind us what we're talking about. This is basic WordPress, right? Where the visitor interacts with WordPress core and they get their server side render HTML back and the developer and the publisher all, all do their thing directly in WordPress core. So what we're talking about today is headless WordPress um, where our developers are mostly working uh, in this Node.js runtime to develop the front end of our applications. Uh, and then that talks with WordPress through uh, some sort of API, whether that's REST, WP GraphQL, and then the publisher, the content marketer, whoever that is, uh, just, just goes and, you know, interacts with that basically through there. Um, now, what we're going to be focused on today is not so much talking about the API stuff, like, although we'll touch on that just a little bit, um, we're really going to be focused on the Node.js runtime uh, piece of this and just showing you all of the different options, like walking you through some of the starters uh, and, and just sort of giving you like a tour of the front end hosting part of the platform. Um, so I've got kind of like a couple of things that we can go do uh, and features we can demonstrate throughout the hour uh, if, if we kind of get there. Um, so without further ado, let's get after it. But before that, I'm going to sort of set the stage a little bit. Um, and so we kind of left this uh, session really casual, if you will. Um, so what we're going to try and do is like, I'm going to go and we're going to say, all right, we're going to start with Astro, for example, and we'll pull up Astro's website, run through their sort of getting started docs, and then sort of see what we would need to do to push that to the Atlas platform. So there's sort of a mixture of, we're going to start these projects from scratch. A couple of them, we've got starters already made um, that, you know, we, we will just whip out and use real quick. Um, so it's going to be you know, like I said, just sort of this casual walk through all the different frameworks we can we can manage to fit in in an hour. We know we've got a request for Nux. So if anybody else wants to see anything in there, definitely throw it in the chat and I'll make sure I will try and make our way around that. But so a lot of this, like I said, off the cuff, very unplanned. You'll see some success for sure. You will might also see some live troubleshooting as we work through this ever evolving uh, JavaScript landscape. Somebody says, how do you manage user logins with Atlas? Well, that would be just however your front end framework is gonna handle those authentications. If you're looking for some ideas, uh, Faust is a great place to start. And part of the reason we kind of made that framework was as like an example of how you can implement th th those things. Um, and I don't think I'll be able to get into a lot of the details there because kind of this was just focused on that Node.js runtime piece, sort of deploying it on Atlas. Um, and I got my uh, co-pilot here, Fran, who's going to hop back and forth a little bit with me, I think, and, and handle deploying some of these yep. apps. Um, okay, so cool. So from there, yeah, let's let's exit full screen. All right. And the first one is uh, I'm going to take a look at is Astro. Um, so if you haven't heard, let me get those docs open and pull them over here for us. Um, and so Astro is a really, really cool newer front end framework. Um, it is based around the idea of content sites. So one of the things I would recommend is if you're new to this, definitely look at this Why Astro uh, little starter here, because it, it gives you a sort of nice introduction into what Astro is good for and what it's not good for. So they're really focused on this content 
focus site use case, right? As opposed to like a full on web app. It's like somebody just asked about user authentication. And so if you need authentication, like Astro might not be your thing, but if you're trying to make a super slick, super fast uh, content focused website, um, you can get there uh, doing that. So let's just open up their getting started and sort of see what that looks like. Like, yeah, clearly we could, you know, make a make a browser based template. Um, we'll just copy this npm create command and I'm going to bop over here into the terminal and we'll just run that and see what we get. I already know what we're going to get. So surprise, surprise. Uh, they've got a really, really nice uh, animated Houston character guy who's going to help us initiate our launch sequence. Oh um, so I'm just going to go ahead and actually keep the name of the project that that they gave for me. Um, let's see, since we're doing something WordPress focused, I'm going to choose uh, a personal website starter kit. And that's going to copy me some of these project files. Uh, would I like to end install the dependency? Sure. Let's go ahead and do that. And we should have gotten some Red Hot Chili Peppers music because there's going to be a lot <laughs> of <laughs> loading on this. Um, and I do love Astro. Yes, everybody, everybody who knows me knows I love Astro. So if you're looking for a longer tutorial on that note, um, and you come down oh, here yeah. to their connecting a CMS section, yeah, we actually just got a backlink in there to some of our content. So I wrote a post on how to do, you know, do this. And I've got a nice starter out there that you can, you can use if you want to. Um, but that's definitely out there. And Astro, they've got fantastic docs. Um, so very easy to learn, very easy to get started. Uh, would I like to initialize a new Git repository? Yes, yes, I would. Um, so type strip, script, we're going to choose relaxed. And then Houston says, all right, we are good to go. So let's copy this command in here. Um, and we'll come in here and just run npm run dev and just see what that gets us in our local preview. All right, so copy that. All right, hello astronaut, cool. We got a couple of different pages. Uh, oh, we got some backlinks to Astro stuff. All right, so cool. So that looks all right. So from here, let's see, I'm actually just gonna open this up in VS Code too, just for a second, because we're gonna need to make some changes uh, to Astro. So Astro as a framework is kind of interesting. So it's it doesn't have sort of the complex or complex like rendering stuff that Next.js does. It right now is either fully SSG, static site generation, or it is fully server side rendered. And there are a couple of like adapters you can use to whether that's node or what, you know, depending on what your deployment target is. Um, so what we're going to need to do, and I'm going to hop over here into my, uh, WP Engine user portal just to sort of get us get us geared up. Um, so what we're going to actually need to do to make this build on um, Atlas is add an additional package. Um, so I'm going to npm install and then dash dash save. And then this is going to be HTTP dash server. So this is like a lightweight HTTP package, HTTP server package. Um, that we're just going to end up pointing at the, the build folder, the build output folder that Astro creates for us. And so when we, if we hop back into like this chart and, you know, go back into here and we talk about what this Node.js runtime is in Atlas, it, it is very much like a Node container, right? It's a long running process. Um, so we can start this HTTP server and then any traffic it gets, it'll, it'll sort of direct, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a very flexible pattern. So like if you wanted to install Express in front of this, for example, which is one of the things that Astro recommends, um, you can totally do that since it's just a node server. So at that point, it's really flexible. It's up to you. Um, all right. So I think now I'm going to need to go create a new repo for this, right? So let me open up my browser and go to repo.new. And what did they call this? A capricious, what did we call it? Capricious cycle, R-I-C-I-O-U-S. R-I-C-I-O-U-S, I'm not sure it really matters that these match. Cycle. Wait, Jeff, did <clears throat> did Astro just generate that on its own, that name? It did, yeah. So that it created that. I didn't give it a name. I could oh, that's have, cool. um, but I, I didn't. didn't. Yep. All right. So let's let's go ahead, just copy this command just to add the remote. 
Uh, and then we're going to add all our files. Commit M um, and we'll say, I guess, initial commit. And then we'll push those up there. Ah, we got to set our upstream branch. I should have just listened to what GitHub told me to do. All right, cool. So that should be there. Let's go to the code and just make sure that all that stuff looks good. Um, and did it get our Astro? So wait, okay. So I need to make one additional change, right? So I installed my HTTP server package. And so on the Atlas platform, basically it's going to just run through whatever's in your package.json. It's going to run npm install. It's going to run whatever is in your build command. And then finally, once that's done, it's going to run what's ever in your start command. So right now, if I run start, I would run Astro in dev mode, which is basically server-side rendering. Um, so I'm going to pop back out of here. Let's open up uh, VS Code again. And then I'm just going to make one modification to this. And we're going to, on npm start, we're going to call HTTP server. And then pass that the path to uh, this disk directory, which is basically where Astro is going to build all of its stuff. Um, so we'll do that again, just to add that change. the start command, and then we'll push that live. All right, cool. Okay, so now that all that's done, let's just make sure that's up here. All right, update start command. All right, that looks good. Okay, so now let's YOLO it and see what, what happens when we try and build this uh, on Atlas. Okay. So to do that, I'm gonna hop back over to um, my my Atlas portal. Um, and, and Atlas as a hosting package, I think it's important to kind of talk about what that means. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Primarily, it's like this, this Astro thing that we just created. Like if we look at our, um, you know, I guess, do we have the example open? We don't have the example open anymore. That's fine. Um, but our example isn't really tied to WordPress right now. It's just the front end piece that, that we're going to build. Um, so it's going to ask us some questions that aren't really going to apply in this scenario that will apply in uh, later scenarios. And so let's go ahead and click create app. I have the option to start with a blueprint or pull from a repo. I'm going to pull from a repo, obviously, because we got our nice capricious cycle app up there. And then, yep, I'll, I'll, if you haven't authenticated with GitHub, it'll ask you to, but I have. So I can just pop in here and uh, you know pull this up. All right, so continue. I'm going to go ahead and just say, okay, yep, launch it in US Central. Um, and then I'm going to click main. And then this is where we're going to get into some, some of these options. Um, we can install some environment variables. And if we are passing information, you know, maybe want to want to pass the URL of our WordPress site to the app, we would do that here. Um, you can also link a WordPress environment or create a new one. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to say I've already, uh, got one and I'm gonna use kind of my demo hub. I don't need to set any environment variables for this. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna click uh, create app. That's gonna sort of kick off the build process. And I think what we'll do at that point, Fran, if you're cool with it, we'll uh, swap screens. And if you wanna run us through the next one while this is building, does that sound like a plan? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna click create app. We'll let Fran sort of talk about next just a little bit. Um, and then when when it kicks it back over to me, we'll take a look and uh, check out what, what happened with our Astro app. All right, so that's gonna build and I'm gonna stop sharing Fran so you can you can take over the driver's seat. All righty. Cool, and I'll make a pass through the chat with if anybody's got questions. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna deploy a front end next application that I already have pushed up into my repository here. Uh, and there's no, um, it's called next Atlas test. And there's no, I don't have any uh, back end WordPress environment connected to this thing. I'm essentially just deploying a front end Next.js application to start with. So I basically already did what Jeff did. I went to my terminal and I pulled down the uh, NPX package for uh, Next.js. And then I created their boilerplate code, which um, everybody is probably familiar with. Do they show it on here? You should see. 
No, they don't have a picture of their front end uh, boilerplate code. Anyway, we'll soon see it. Um, so when I go to my Atlas application and I hit create app, same thing that Jeff did. I'm gonna create an application and pull from my repo. And there it is, the test. Continue. And I'm going to pick US Central because I'm in Austin, Texas. Main, main. I already have a WordPress instance and I can just, I'll just link it to this buddy. Yeah, and and I'll just call out some stuff while Fran's doing this too. The linking to the WordPress instance doesn't actually make the connection between the two. So that's a good thing to know. What it does do is it gives you like UI affordances. So when you look at that list of Atlas apps, you have a link to both your uh, front end and your, your kind of back end, if you will. So you can get to both of those pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet. So now it's, yeah, it's building my, pulling down a container, building my code, and it's going to deploy it soon. And we will have a URL. It's funny. I think that, uh, oh, the URL is already showing up. Yeah, they provision the URL pretty quick. And I think if you go to that, yeah, go ahead and hit it. And let's just yeah, show everybody what happens. Yeah, like, so if you hit it, it's like provisioned. Oh, which you'll get this yeah. site is not available message. So like if you see that and you have the URL, just don't panic. Because like that just means that stuff's still going on in the background. Um, and we're talking about internally making a, mm -hmm. a more like UX friendly uh, message that you can see there. And so that, that actually isn't going to show up and populate until it's gone through the, the uh, deployment phase. Cool. And then one thing I did want to show that um, the uh, the crowd here is that, again, to Jeff's point at the beginning of this, is that uh, Next.js is better than Astro. Just kidding. I'm just well, kidding. No. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm throwing fighting Dude, words. Dude, what? <laughs> no, yeah, fight fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. No, um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because if you go back to the Astro docs, they actually point to Next.js as what you should be using if you're trying to do anything that's like application focused, right? Yeah. Like, so that's one of the things I love about Astro is they're like, this is what we're for. But if you're looking for these features, like maybe go with somebody else where I think, you know, not everybody yeah. does that. So from a from an agnostic perspective, I think this is where the, the dev joy or the dev X of Atlas comes in, right? Is that... Again, just to repeat what my co-pilot Jeff said is that you do not have to use Faust JS to deploy on this framework, which is what we're showing here. And I just wanted to show you guys why the uh, my my next JS application, uh, Jeff, that I made when I first uh, came onto the uh, DevX uh, crew here on the headless side, uh, the next JS polylang. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and this is on Atlas, and it's a next JS app. This is not on Faust. Y'all, um, my repo is public, and uh, yeah, you could totally, totally see um, that. You know, you could. Th this is a, a deployed, um, finished Next.js application on on uh, Atlas. So yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, if Fran, let me. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I can take screen sharing from you, but I'll take I'll take yeah, back over, and I think we're. Because I think my raw next app that I just uh, is still building, Jeff. So I can You're deploying, stop. yeah. And so when whenever that's done, if you just want to throw that link in the chat or throw it to me in Slack or something, we we'll, we'll we'll loop back around. Um, static build Astra, yeah, yeah, Blake, that is really cool. I kind of like it, and I've thought about doing some weird stuff with uh, Express. Like I don't know, that just makes me happy. I, I that's Express is how I got into uh, sort of JavaScript development back in the day, and so like the option to like combine the, the two would be really neat. And you could probably make some really strange and fun things. Um, all right. So this is what happens. This is what it looks like, you know, once everything builds and deploys. Um, and if you're deploying a new WordPress instance, there's a step in there for provisioning that WordPress install um, as well. So like you might see another step in there if you're deploying everything from, from a new, from a new slate. Um, but let's just check out the build logs for a second, because uh, like that's a cool thing to look at, uh, and especially something that's useful if you're trying to troubleshoot. Like we haven't seen anything fail yet, uh, as far as we know. Um, but eventually, you know, I think a couple of the ones I was playing around with, like we might have to do some troubleshooting to get them to work, and that's cool. 
um, cause it's cool to see. Um, but here, yeah, you can, you get a ton of useful information about the build process here. So like it tells you what Node.js version it's using, tells you what version of NPM it's using and things like that. So if you have version compatibility issues, you can sort of troubleshoot them. Then, you know, like runs you through our, now we're running and we installed our packages. Now we're running NPM run build and now we're doing all the things. And here is it sort of generating all these MDX blog posts. Um, and then e ooh, even creates us a sitemap too. And then uh, we get all that deployment information. Um, so cool. So let's actually look at what that looks like. And if we click this URL, awesome. That's pretty much what we expected it to look like based on our sort of test deployment. Um, so that's really awesome. Another cool thing about Astro is that by default, it really ships almost zero JavaScript to the browser. So like super fast, super fast. And once this stuff gets sucked up into the CDN layer of Atlas, it is uh, super fast as well. And so I'll just call out a couple of features on, on this option. Um, so like clean rebuild, some of the build processes of frameworks will get cached in between builds. So clean rebuild sort of just nukes all that stuff, nukes everything at the CDN too. So if you want to just like freshen up everything, uh, clean rebuilds the way to go. So you saw here, maybe a second ago, we have a cancel build button. So if while it's building, you decide you want to back that out, you can. Um, and then we don't have a ton of, um, I don't have separate builds here, but once, if we can get some here in a second, uh, you know, there, there's the option to roll back. So we've got a rollback feature, I think that just got launched like last week or something. All right, so cool. So from here, we what, what are we at? We've done two, right? We've done Astro, we've done Next. Um, all right, so let's, let me check my list over here. So let's talk about um, another sort of new one uh, remix, um, and remix. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I'm also like, I don't know. Fran, I mean, Fran I, always gets me. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> not as excited about <laughs> next JS as everybody else, or I like these like niche frameworks. So remix is a really cool framework too. It is react based. Um, yep. and like a lot of other things now is sort of built for this multiple deployment target environment where we have, you know, and, and here you can sort of see what happens if we do this NPX create remix at latest um, sort of deal, right? Where do you want to deploy remix app server, architect, Cloudflare workers, fly.io, Netlify or Vercel. And you can sort of, you know, each one comes with its own adapter built in to deploy directly to that environment. Um, and I'm going to pop open chat and just make sure that everything, we have a question regarding connect WordPress. Douglas, yeah, we can right now. And so what is it specifically that you're looking for um, in regards to connecting WordPress? Because um, this remix one I'm going to show you for now, we'll, we'll do some of that. Um, and then, so if you want me to dive into any more detail about that, I'll linger for a bit on how that happens um, when we open up the starter. But if you have any other follow-up questions about that, just let me know. Um, Okay. Yeah. So this is um, sort of what you'd get here. Uh, now, Remix is sort of similar to Next.js in that it does sort of like a hybrid routing model where, you know, everything that first page is server side rendered. And then everything after that, you get these JS chunks that come down and will um, load your page if you have JavaScript enabled. If not, it should work uh, like it does. But the one thing that Remix does that I, I really like is it has this mental model and we'll go and check this out real quick. Um, let me see, data loaders. The idea that all of your data is actually loaded on the server um, instead of the client. So you get these, ex you export these loader functions in each of your routes, and that's how you sort of encapsulate your data fetching. But it always runs on the server, right? So it's not like Next.js where you might get this, you know, like React component with Apollo client, and then it calls that directly. Like it's always getting loaded on the server, and you're just sending the resulting like rendered HTML back down to the client. Wait, so it's so kind of yeah. cool. So you're yeah, saying yeah. it's always server-side rendered? Just so I'm the, understanding. The, da the, the data loading always happens on the server. So okay. when you have like a route component, and let me actually pop out and we'll uh, go to GitHub. Okay, quick. yeah. Just, and yeah. I'm gonna Because I haven't looked our... at their docs in a while. And... Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good call out. Okay, so here's sort of the, the Remix app that we're going to use for this. And so we've got this app folder um, into answer, I'm sorry, let's see, Douglas's question about connecting to WordPress, right? I've got um, a WordPress instance for this already. And to do this one, I mean, I really just created this sort of basic Apollo client. I probably didn't need to do that. 
um, and then passed it this, you know, the GraphQL endpoint for that particular uh, thing. And I should honestly probably have this set it as, a, as an environment variable and something I'll do here in just a second, right? But so we configure this, this Apollo client and then Remix, like a lot of the other frameworks, has this sort of page-based, file-based routing system. And so like in index.js, um, if we look in here, we have that loader function up at the top, right? So that's where we format our GraphQL query. We use our Apollo client to actually make the query. And then we return that um, down here at the end of the loader function. And then when we want to use that data in our component, we use this use loader data hook. But so like... No, it'll do spage type things, but yeah. any of the data requests are run on the server. So basically like it uh -huh. runs this, it runs all this code and then yeah. sends you the result. And so it's really nice. Like, I think that's kind of a cool mental model personally. Cause like, I would always kind of get confused when, where it's like, okay, well, where is this code going to run? Right. Where is this environment variable URL going to be at the end of the day? Does it get shipped to the client? Is it always going to be on the server? Um, so I think that in a lot of ways simplifies stuff. And honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why Shopify just acquired Remix is because like, I don't know, I could see that being confusing to do in e-commerce yeah. um, and being sort of a foot gun. So, so cool. All right. So let's start our cycle over. Um, I'm going to click create app again. You know, we'll do this. We already saw how that connection to the WordPress site was going to get made. And we'll close out some of these tabs just to kind of tidy up what we're doing here. All right, so yep, in here we'll say remixing WordPress. Yeah, 15 days ago, let me, yeah, we'll see. I might, all right, continue. Let me just make sure that this is what I want. Yeah, update package lock, that's wrong. Okay, so for this we'll say, all right, we want the main branch. Uh, I already have my WordPress instance and I have this My Remix app uh, one for that. And like I said, should probably have that set as an environment variable right now. It's just kind of hard coded in our Apollo client. Um, so from here we can click create app and then that's gonna start spinning for like, like the others have. And while we do that, yeah, let's check out Fran's um, Next.js example. Next is next life. Life. Next <laughs> life till the next that. life, man. Next is life, homie. I, I know. I've always <laughs> been like, I've always been the like likes the weird, weird technology okay. type. And here's the thing, so. y'all. Like, and you know, Jeff and I, we always like kind of have these um sidebars within the headless podcast that we do is um the reasons of why Next.js is such a the the most popular, widely used front end JavaScript framework is due to I there, there's two things I believe what Vercel did in, in with this framework it is number one I think they were like more the like spearhead when this headless decoupled yeah for sure that's, that's the first thing right and they took react which like obviously like you know when Facebook created it and everybody started using it on the front end stuff they took it and then they built all that rendering pattern on top of it. And now it just kind of like is ingrained in um in our in our in our dev culture as far as like being and, and everybody just it's like they're it's like go-to. That's why it's like these frameworks and these platforms that are built like Atlas, Netlify, Vercel, and all these things. There's there's configurations and mechanisms that listen for oh is this the next app yep just build it make sure that the dev doesn't have to add a script file or do anything of that nature to spin something up it just kind of quickly um does it for you and removes that and abstracts all that that layer out you know what i mean jeff so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, it's yeah it, and, and i mean being around as long as Next.js has you don't you don't get that big without like accumulating a little bit of cruft here and there uh, yeah so, you know um <laughs> But cool. So while we're doing that and while we're waiting on Remix, um, let's actually, you know, uh, we can we can take a sidestep. And I know we had a question about how, what the WordPress backend looks like for this. Um, and so we can dig into that just a little bit. Um, so most of the examples that we've created are using this plugin called WP GraphQL. Um, and so that's sort of just like a drop in plugin to WordPress core that ter basically turns your, your WordPress server into this 
WP gra like a GraphQL server. Um, and what that gives me is it also gives me this graphical IDE where I can come in here and like visually compose my queries. So if I like open query composer, I can add nodes to these queries and, and do stuff like that. And then if I want to run them against my live data, I can, you know, come over here and click, uh, you know, run my query for, and you can see like, all right, I'm doing some stuff. Um, this is actually ACF data. Um, so this is something I've been working on lately. Like I've got just you know, some basic custom fields for post resources that I think if we look at my artisan air plant chicharrones <laughs> post, that, yeah. um, you know, we, we get these boxes down here and then using a WP GraphQL extension, um, I can surface the, that data uh, on my GraphQL API, which is really neat. So it really lets me do some flexible stuff uh, and, and be as complex as I want to be. Um, so cool. So that that what other questions does anybody have about the WordPress backend while I'm in here? Yeah. Good call out, Jeff. And what any of that looks like. I think it was uh Douglas, maybe you had that question. So if you got another a follow-up, Douglas, or like one want, want me to loop back around once we're in a holding period for another framework, we can we can totally do that. Um, but you can also use the REST API, right? So that's you know, like for a lot of these. I think Gatsby, once we get to Gatsby, that might be the only one who's like really hardly opinionated on. It needs WP GraphQL. And while we're here, I think there's also a plugin, a WordPress plugin that you have to install this WP Gatsby plugin to make all that work together. Um, but other than that, I don't think any of the other frameworks really care. It's really up to you and how you want to fetch that data. And so a lot of what I've been doing lately is, hasn't even been using Apollo Client and it's just me making fetch calls. Like, so when I built my Astro starter, it's just fetch calls to this GraphQL client. So it's, you know, a, one less dependency that we have to install. Um, yeah. But all right, so let's see what our Remix site is looking like. Success. All right, so let's open it up and see what we get. All right, so cool. So this one is actually um, hooked up to a WordPress instance. I had, you know, again, I. Uh, I'm a sucker for hipster Ipsum. So if you're ever looking, I'll show you all because it's funny. It is um, pretty funny, y'all. It, it's just, it's slightly more enjoyable than making like- Than Lauren uh, Ipsum or whatever. Yeah, artisanal filler for for your projects. Like, so cheese, cheese Ipsum. So yeah. yeah, that's cool. So if you're like, want to spice things up a little bit, hipster Ipsum. If you can handle dairy, cheese Ipsum. Um, <laughs> but that's up to you. Yeah, so Remix, really cool. Um, Let's 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 take a look here. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just sort of inspect this because I think I've, you know, one of the other things that I like is I think Remix does a lot of stuff with uh, link prefetching oh, as well. Nice. So you can see here that like as I hover over some of this stuff, like it or bring it into the viewport, it automatically fetches the next piece of data for me um, to load. So like if I'm going to load my kombucha post, it's already basically loaded, and 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 so it really feels next like in that sort of regard, right? Next does that as well. So Remix sort of preserves that. It's just that it doesn't load data on the client. Like it doesn't load data on the client, um, which either you like or you hate. I kind of like it. Um, all right. So cool. That was Remix. Need to jump. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, David. Um, cool. Yeah. Everybody's cheese zips might have been the best takeaway of today. So <laughs> Jeff, how many? Irony. That's remix. We got that's remix. three. Yep. Oh man. All right. I'm talking too much. I'm talking too much. Let's see what uh, else no, we can get. Just... All right. No, thank you for keeping me on track. That's 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 why we're we're such good co-pilots, friend. <laughs> um all right, so cool. So we did remix, right? Let me let me close that out. Um let's mm -hmm. talk Nuxt for a second. Okay. So Ooh. Nuxt three. And, and I'm going to show Nux 3 too. Like I think Nux 2 is pretty simple. Like you just download it and it would be similar to how Fran deployed Next, right? There's no configuration. It sort of just assumes this node environment where this one, I think we've got a Nux 3, we've got to do a little bit of different, different stuff. Um, and then I'll show you to like, we'll talk through what you would want to do if you want to take this in an alternative direction. Uh, but let me hop open over here. I think I've got a Nuxt app somewhere uh, already done. So let me open that up so that I'm not telling lies as we get going. So I did have to make like one modification to this Nuxt project. So this Nuxt app that I've got here is basically just like the bare bones of what you would get if you did this, you know, the, the Nuxy 
init your project name. Like that's basically what I did. And then jump down to uh, the deployment piece. And so obviously since we're targeting Atlas, we're gonna target this Node.js server um, by default. And so what we need to do there is like when we run build, it produces this server output file, which is actually really similar to the way that Astro handles this with both, you know, its server side option and it's a, and it's statically generated one. Um, and so what we needed to do to make this run on Atlas was just um, replace our start command with basically what's in this guide, right? Saying node run this output slash server slash index.mjs file. Um, and then that that should work fine. So I'm going to kick that off and then I'll pop back over to uh, to the Nux docs and show one more thing. Sorry, Jeff, would, is it, so is it uh, because I'm like, I've never messed with Nux I, and you've, you're obviously um, experienced with it. Is Nux... View till I die, Fran. <laughs> Diego's next till he dies. You're yeah, yeah. We'll have to we'll it's, have to get well, like bandanas. It is and it's, and bandana yeah, like a game yeah, type yeah. thing. Is is next um views answer to next. Is it it is. It very is? much is. Okay. Yeah. I just was yeah. curious. And I think that. that was like the play off the name too. Uh why it's so similar. Um <laughs> uh, so Yes, absolutely. And it's very similar. Um, there are like a couple of differences. And like, obviously, the way you hand, you thought they were just misspelling next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see that. Um, I mean, and, so there are ISR? obviously a lot of the ways. Can you ISR? So, not? I don't know that they have those sorts of like rendering okay. patterns. It is very much still like a hybrid kind of thing. Okay. Um, I believe their default, like when you run this net, this node server, I believe it is um, hybrid. Oh, Svelte fans. We got Svelte on here, Kevin. Ooh, we got Svelte so we on get here. There. Yeah. yeah. So, and we might, sadly, we'll see how much more babbling I do, but we might only get to one or two more. Um, or I could just go wild in the last three minutes and deploy all <laughs> the starters I have on the side. Um so like, okay, so there's this node server option, right? Which is cool. And I believe does like the hybrid routing like Next does, right? If you hit the, fir the first page, you get the server thing. But then after that, sort of the spa takes over. Um, but this also has a couple of other options. Like, so you can do static hosting and they do this crawl based pre-render, which is kind of an interesting concept in comparison to how a lot of the other frameworks do it, right? So like this, I think like actually crawls your website and will follow all the links and then generates all of the pages that it can find on your website. Um, whereas with a lot of these other things, and then, yeah, I think you can throw in some like manual pre-renders down here if you want to pass in, oh. pass in these routes. Um, but that's just kind of interesting, right? Cause like, you know, both with N next and with Astro, like you have this get static paths concept where I have to provide it ahead of time, all of the stuff I want pre-rendered. So this is kind of like a cool, a cool take on it. But then you can also do this client side only rendering thing. So like if you want to basically take your Nuxt app and make it entirely a view spa, you just like sort of set this, this variable here. And then it would just be like one thing that gets loaded into there. Um, okay. So, okay. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Um, and, and I'm excited to play around with it. Nux 3, I think just got stable earlier in November. Nice. So like it hasn't been like, I don't know, people have been using it, but it hasn't been stable enough for us to produce content on yet, um, but it is now. And so I think, you know, we're definitely gonna include um, this in our upcoming framework guides and then probably also loop back to this and, and do like a new revised tutorial because um, the existing Nux one we have is pretty, pretty popular. Um, so cool. All right, so that that's up here. And yeah, let's pop back in here. We already did that. So on my list, where are we at on time? We got 18 minutes. We probably want to leave Jeff. time for, for questions. Um, spell. <laughs> All right, we go and spell. Yeah, let's do this for let's, Kellen, man. All right, let's do it for, for Kellen. Kellen. <laughs> okay. So spell is kind of, yeah, let me, let me get that open. And Kellen, I don't know if you want to get on the camera and you talk about. I mean, if you want to, I mean, Kellen's down for spell. I like I didn't. I, I haven't messed around with spell, so a lot of these I haven't played around with. Um, but so I came up with a really quick like spelt kit atlas app. Let me get that open. 
Um, and I'm trying to remember exactly what I had to do to get this running. I know I had to make a similar change. Um, Count us Rich Harris on speed dial, dude, get him here. <laughs> um, so let's, let me check this. Cause like, I think I had to, again, add a start script and this is just one of those things. So like, if you're in the JavaScript e ecosystem and like aren't on the bleeding edge of stuff, this appears to be what's happening is like, it, we're as, as we get these different deployment targets, like you start to get the edge or like Deno and like all these other run times, right? They're stopping the assumption that everything is just a node container. And so like, I'm finding myself more and more having to go in and do stuff like this, right? Where I have to tell, hey, once this felt project is done building node, you need to run this index file. So I think that's cool because we as web developers have more options now, but it's just one of those things like mentally, I've got to remind myself, oh, okay, this isn't, you know, the web dev of three or five years ago. Um, awesome, Spencer. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Yep. We, we love to see people here. Um, cool. Rich Harris. Yeah. It would be helpful to have Rich Harris on, on speed dial. All right. So cool. So let's come back out here. Like I said, we've got this cancel build uh, feature um, and I'm going to ignore that for a second. We'll go kick off our Svelte app um, first. So we'll do that. Pull from a repo. Select repository. Svelte Atlas app. And then, yeah, we'll see if this, this does what we want it to do. Main, main's good. I don't need this, but I'll make it my demo content hub and I'm good because we're just doing a spell thing. All right, so that's that's running. Let's go check up on our Nuxt app. Uh, let's see, is that running yet? All right, so cool. So nothing fantastic there. Um, you know, nothing crazy at least. Um, so while Svelte's running, um, let me hop in here. So let me kind of demo some other features of the platform maybe. Um, and, and just talk about that, for example. So like one of the cool things that we added not too long ago um, was this idea of PR preview. So I know that's like a big thing if you're used to using Vercel or Netlify. Um, so let me see if I've actually got this already in here. Next step, I'm gonna change into this directory. Just make sure I'm up to date. All right, cool. Uh, so let's open this. Yeah, so we'll show some deployment previews and sort of what that looks like. Um, and let's say I want to come in here. Uh, where's my next welcome? I don't know. Let's just throw some stuff in here and see what happens. So we'll do another H1 and just say hello. And we'll, we'll YOLO this into the cloud. Um, so we'll do get this up into GitHub. <laughs> I'm just gonna put YOLO because that's what I just did. Oh no, so sorry. Let's actually, and this was a very important part of doing the PR, the PR previews, is I needed to be on a different branch. Um, so let's let's back up just a second. Uh, feature change title. And then let's save our file here. Let's do something else. We'll do an H2 down here. Testing. All right, do the same thing. Yeah, and then we'll set our upstream stream branch there. Cool. And then so let's hop back in here. And now we should see. All right, we've got this other branch in here. Um, all right, cool. And so from here, what we would want to do is uh, do compare and pull request, right? So we've got this other branch with a couple of changes. Um, and we'll just leave this blank, create the pull request. And then it's going to check for this ability to merge. Yeah. Oh, man. No. Nope. And I forgot, I forgot another step. So this is why Jeff fails. 
No. What is... happens when I try to go? No, I did. I, I, I've got to what enable happened? this. Oh, I've got to enable it. Yep. Uh, so my bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. I've led you astray twice. You should not trust me. <laughs> um, so to, to do what I wanted to do, uh, you just come in here and open up this, uh, you open up the settings for your app and then turn this preview environments toggle on so that this feature works the way that you expect it to. Um, so now we can, now that, now that we've fixed uh, Jeff's, Jeff's mistake, um, let's go to pull requests. We're actually just going to close this one. Uh, edit. Oh, no, that's not what we want to do. Cancel, close PR. And that's closed. And then we'll come back to our app. And then we'll do yet another change. We'll just go one layer deeper. Uh, fail. <laughs> Say sad. Man, I would trust you with everything, Jeff. You taught me dot reduce yesterday. We yeah. we did go deep into the JavaScript array methods. Jeff um, is a yeah. Jedi JavaScript saint kind man. <laughs> if if only I could remember the basics of uh, the Alice platform, <laughs> I would be be a well rounded dev. Um, so cool. We'll push that back up. All right, and now with the feature enabled in Atlas. If I open a new pull request, uh, this should actually spin us up a new branch. Um, so yep, that's able to merge. We'll say, okay, cool, create the PR. Um, and that should spin, all right, cool, yep. And that's what we wanted to see is as soon as we open this PR, we get this Atlas bot that'll come in and sort of give us some updates in real time about uh, this PR branch that's building for us. And you know, we'll see if it survives, I'm not really sure. I would have expected like a components folder and to see this Nux welcome component somewhere. So I don't know, we'll, we'll have to just kind of wait and see on that and see what happens. Um, but so this is gonna build and if we click details, it'll take us back into the platform, um, which is cool. Uh, but one thing to note is like some of the ways that we see this used with agencies is that not all of the people actually have access to the platform. So just kind of be aware of that, that you would need to be able to authenticate with the WP engine portal to get in there. Um, so cool. It's got no still pending building code. All right. So we'll let that run for just a second. And I think let's check in on our Svelte app um, and see what that looks like. So we got, yeah. So build logs look good. All right. Let's open this in a new tab and let's see if we get our, oh yes, we do. All right. So cool. We got our Svelte, Svelte counter. So again, that was fairly straightforward to get going. Oh, sick. Um, all we needed to do, and and so I will say, we're working on some framework guides for all of this stuff that'll sort of encapsulate a lot of what we talked about today. But I had to Google actually how to get this to work and got it from somewhere other than Svelte stocks. Um, so if you're going to look here, it's not immediately apparent sort of what you need to do to get that to run oh. on um, a node server, which I was kind of like, huh. you know, like I went to configuration and... So this adapter piece was fine. And I guess, yeah, let me go down this rabbit hole because that's important. Um, so I did have to install a node adapter. Um, and like I said, they have a bunch of these other adapters. Um, so I installed the node adapter. I did essentially what they did here. It was just that they didn't, like the start command didn't do anything. Like I still had to go and, you know, modify that start command after the fact to point to that index.js file. Um, look at that felt bundle size though. I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there's so many mean, choices out there. We live in a yeah. great time, y'all. Great time for sure. Um, okay, so cool. All right. Yep, Svelte's rocking. I'm glad we, we were able to make Callan happy. Um, <laughs> and so we got Nuxt up here. All right. And so cool. Yeah, after my YOLO update and then fail commits. Nice. There's the URL, Jeff. Yep, we got, yep. Yeah, so and so that's what's cool is once it's done building, yep, we get a link back to this whole separate PR preview environment. Um, and Zoom like really needs to fix this UI. Fix I need it. to learn how yeah. to use the computer better. Um, so we get this preview environment, you know, feature change, change thing, gets its own build log. So it's all really nice. Um, and then, you know, I can come here, I get the, the URL to it directly. And then we can see, all right, cool. Doesn't look great, but it, it took my, my, my fail changes, which is awesome. Um, and so we get that PR preview that's specific to that branch. And then for us, like as developers to manage those PR preview environments, 
uh, we don't really need to do anything other than um, what we need to, to manage the PR itself, right? So if I come back into this environment and I scroll down to the bottom, uh, we can click in here to preview environments and sort of see all the ones that we've got open. And so like, if I wanna close it, I think I actually can delete it from right here, but it will sort of self-manage if I close this pull request or if I um, merge it. So if I merge it or if I close it, it's gonna self-delete that environment. Um, and I think like for most of you, like for most plan sizes, the amount of preview environments you can have is pretty much unlimited. So like, I know that there is a limit, but I can't ever see somebody using it. Um, and then another cool, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do this one more time because um, now I feel like a hero. So we'll, we'll do that and uh, we'll come through. And what's neat is, all right, so if I add these files again, uh, we'll do success. And then, you know, we'll push those back to our, our open branch. If it has an open PR to it, uh, this should rebuild again. Yep. Like it'll detect the change that we just pushed um yep and we can see all right it already rebuilt yep, yeah it's going to fire off another build so it's really cool yeah. like if you have these features that are open and you want to keep iterating on them you can just keep adding commits to this branch and it will auto detect those each time and re-update your environment and the cool thing about this jeff is that live url live on the internet on the web can be passed um, from your non-technical teams within your orgs, like say you had a design team or a marketing team that just really wanted to see the um, the uh, the site live that you just made a change that they suggested. They they literally mm -hmm. can see it on a live view. You don't have to yeah you don't have to like share a, uh, your pull up your local machine and like run npm run dev and show them locally. It's literally they can pass this URL around. Then they can make you know comments within GitHub or wherever you guys have like maybe Jira or whatever. And then you can the developer can make changes and continuously iterate as just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on this URL that's not even touching prod. And and I really like the idea too. Like the more I see these PR preview environments working, I'm like, it it makes like the develop branch less important, which is yep, kind of neat too. Exactly. Like I can just make this feature change, and if it's small enough, cool. Like let's just ship it there and then put it right into main if that works for you. Um, you know, like, cause we have developed branches and now, I mean, even just Fran and I are working on something the other day and we're just like, all right, just put it up on a PR preview. And like, let's see what that looks like. We get to suck in all the environment variables from main. And that's the other thing I'll mention is like any oh, yeah. of the environment variables on the environment or yeah, the app environment, somebody correct me if I'm using the wrong term there, gets sucked over into, into your PR preview. But yep. I know we're running short on time. Um, I'm happy with what we got through. There's a bunch of other ones that I didn't. So maybe we'll do a second and we'll do the long tail. Uh, I've got quick. I've got solid start. We didn't get to Gatsby. Yep. We got five, right? We got five. Five got out five of eight. On it. Yeah. Um, so for y'all, definitely like if there's other stuff you want to see, uh, throw it in the chat. Other questions, throw them in the chat now. We'll hang out for a couple of minutes um, and, and answer questions. Or I'm happy to go back over anything, like dive into deeper detail. Um, I don't have a hard hard stop at three. So if people are having fun, I'm happy to happy to hang out and answer questions for a bit. Likewise, but I could definitely, totally. yeah. And 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 the other thing I'll point out is, like I said, we're working on some framework guides so that all of basically what we did today will be encapsulated in documentation for you all. So if you want to experiment with some of these newer frameworks, like because I did, I don't know how many people have used Quick um, or Quick City, I guess, but I did I did some exploratory work there. I did, um, you know, some with solid and solid start, which is kind of like another meta framework with solid JS. So like the sky's the limit. And since it's just node, most of it's super flexible. Um, Jeff, cool. Jeff, throw some questions at us. What's up? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five deployments. Four Astro Frameworks, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. We'll have to do that. Yeah. One felt kit Good site. Fight. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Too fun, man. So what's next on the Atlas problem. roadmap? That's a that's a great question. Um, let's see. What are what are? I know there's a lot of back end work to optimize the builds and to like. We just put out some changes to make this 
uh, view a little bit more UI friendly. And so I know that there's also some sort of like UI optimization work happening about like the idea between what's an app and what's an environment. Um, so you should see some changes there. I don't know. Um, other stuff, Fran, what, what else am I missing? We just, we just added rollbacks. Right. So let me see That's that now I'm that I've actually. The, the rollbacks, the one-click rollbacks are, are, are huge, especially yeah. when we make a lot of mistakes as engineers. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know that oh, I have crap. anything. I need so a like, version, an older we're version. We're definitely going through and adding a lot of UI affordances. This is fairly new to like show you which one's live. I don't have one I think that I can do a separate deployment to like, I don't have an example one spun up really where I could use the rollback feature, but that was just launched um, the other day. Webhooks and PR environments are out in production. Um, both of those there. What else you got? Diego, you might know this better than I do. If you got anything to add to that. Oh, cool. Yeah, other, other questions? Or anything I can loop back to you before we call it a day? No, sounds good. Well, everybody, thanks for indexing. Uh, and what do you, sorry, sir, can you elaborate on what you mean by indexing? Okay, yeah, so let me, so I think maybe you're talking about like the, the domain thing, the URLs all get indexed. Um, so there should be a robot, like a robot.txt on any one of these WP Engine powered .com domains that should like encourage stuff not to crawl it. Um, I'll see if I can find some links to that. Uh, and like it shouldn't. Um, and let's see if we can double check that. Like, right. I feel like that's true. And it might not be on Atlas. No. All right. So yeah, maybe that's a good question. And that might be on our WordPress instances. So another WordPress instances have um, have a robots.txt that can that can cause some problems if you don't change. Stuart says Yeah, and I think that's the problem too, is like all we can do is ask Google nicely. Yeah, um, okay. site.wpengine.power.com. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's and so stop. what would be helpful that yeah, that's not what I wanted. And I can't copy from the chat. Um, and so what would be helpful there? Would it be like us showing how to do robots.txt files on your front end site? Or like, I can pass that along to the framework team and just be like, hey, can we, I don't know if we can do that on the node container level, but I can see. Um, Cause like at that point, right? We've got that app, that app is serving all the traffic. Um, yeah, see, well, in the WP server end has what I'm talking about, right? So I think if I go to like, um, you know, this site, for example, like demo content hub. And I'll do WP admin. And then I think I'll back out and do robots.txt. Cause like we had a problem with this because we didn't change our domain. Um, robots.txt. Let's see if that works. Yeah. So that's actually, you're right. That is set at the WP server level. And I'll see, I'll pass that feedback along, see what, what the platform team could come up with. Cause you're right. Like if it has that default WP engine domain on the node host, if yeah. we could do that, it would be really cool. Um, I just don't know what that would entail because at that point, right, we've got that container and it's, it's spell or it's Nux, like it's its own thing um, with its own sort of awareness, but I'll pass that along because that's, that's solid feedback and we do it here and we do it here. Um, so cool. Yeah. Any, that's a, that was a really good piece of feedback. Thank you for that, Stuart. Um, yeah, thanks, Stuart. Yep. And, and so also maybe as a side, if you're, if you're using Atlas and you're planning to go live, definitely make sure that you assign a custom domain to your WP engine server as well. Even though like nobody in the public may see it, we're still going to apply this robots.txt file to everything with that URL on it. And so the issue that we ran into was like we were hosting our images on the WP server and that got pulled into Twitter. Twitter actually respected what was on the robots.txt and was like, I can't load these images. Um, and so we had we we needed to set a custom domain to like remove that robots.txt file or create our own. So as a as a part of that go live process, definitely making it like API dot 
whatever your main domain is, you know, like setting some custom domain or subdomain on it uh, is a really good idea on the WordPress side too. Cool, rock on, that was awesome. Any other questions, comments? No? Awesome, well folks, thanks so much for popping in. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Um, we've really enjoyed, yeah, these office hours. Fran, what you got as closing words, sir? Uh, as closing words, thank thank you guys. Thank you for uh, the community for coming to these things. And it's it's stuff like this that with feedback from y'all uh, and questions answered here is how we iterate and make these things better, especially with Atlas and Headless WordPress. Uh, so we we definitely appreciate y'all. And Jeff, man, um, I just deployed the next JS app, but kudos to you, brother. <laughs> you did the, re <laughs> Thanks, the rest man. of Thanks. all those. And I learned something on here because I don't touch those frameworks because I'm next for life, you know? So Yeah, next <laughs> for life. Yeah. And so I guess I'll leave just yeah. with some parting words. Like if you're not in our Discord already, definitely join the conversation there. Um, kind of ask Fran, Grace, myself, any questions you got. Uh, lots of other helpful Headless WP folks in there. Next for life, man. Am I the only person who's going to be rocking the green view bandana? All right. I see. I see. No, I'm team Astro now, if we're being honest. Actually. Um, yeah. So join our Discord, please. Yeah, Astro. Astronauts. Um, and then also, thank you from Fran and I. And if you haven't, follow us on Twitter. We're always posting helpful stuff, helpful resources. Love to interact with folks on the web. Um, so do that. And then I think keep uh, us penciled in. I think in two weeks, we're going to do a session on local and headless WordPress. And so sort of using those two tools uh, together. So if you've liked the headless office hours and this new format, definitely check us out for the last one of the year. And then also, if you got any ideas about what you want to see uh, in 2023, throw them in the chat because we're starting to play in those events right now. And so we'd love to do stuff that you all want and like. So thanks again for coming um, and later days, y'all. Peace.